Hey everybody, we're going to learn a little bit about variables today and especially how they interact with the fat-free framework. Should be a nice quick video to give you a nice overview of what is happening on the inside and maybe help teach you a little bit if you're new to programming, especially in PHP. So uh, if you remember from the, the simple introduction uh, that I did, there's this was the code. I just borrowed the same code from it. We get our instance here. Here's our you know, fat-free framework variable. So how variables work in here is they're actually really quite simple. So if you wanted to define something, you do set, and we'll call this one um, sandwich, because I'm hungry. And the sandwich that I want is a BLT. So now when I come into this route, when I come to the route here, there's framework. And instead of echo hello world, we're going to echo hello, and we can do get sandwich. So with that, we're going to save. We'll turn on our local development server. And voila, hello BLT. So a little insight into some of this as well. So what if I just had a variable here called sandwich bread equals white. You know, hello sandwich on a sandwich bread type of bread. So you'll see my IDE recognizes that this is out of scope. So out of scope, here I'm going to do this so it's a little easier to see it. In PHP, what happens is whenever you execute a function, all of a sudden it's kind of like the world closes in around that function as far as variables go, and uh, it doesn't allow outside variables to jump in unless you specifically define them to jump in. So I mean, if I save this, and I go back here and I refresh on a type of bread, it didn't have white in there. But I can use a little technique called use, and use will actually pass in a specific variable or variables into this. So now I have a white type of bread. Um, back to fat free though, there is another cool feature about this is there is a third parameter here that if it's something that you need that's maybe a little complicated, you can actually cache the response by just going and however many seconds you'd like to cache it for. That's what TTL is. It's time to live. So, I mean, if you I can't really see it here, but if I saved it here, it still works. Um, if I had the caching engine turned on and everything, it would actually create a small file that it would remember this specific piece of data with. So that's really cool. Uh, there is one really handy thing with Fat Free that maybe I could show you if I hop in the vendor. Mm, let's see here. Base is the one where lots of stuff lives. Um, there's this array access thing here. That's pretty cool. Um, it does something like this. Instead of sandwich BLT, I'm going to do sandwich equals BLT. It's a little easier to read, right? <clears throat> so you can do this, and if I save it, it's still going to work and do all of the things that it should. So that's with kind of defining your own variables. You could define um, people equals an array of Bob, Joe, Sam, and there's all your people. Hello, and then we'll just do join. It won't be proper, but you'll just kind of get the idea of what's happening. And this will be people. Eve A. <clears throat> so now we'll save it. Now you can see. Bob, Joe, Sam, I know this could be better, but you get the idea that you could throw arrays and stuff in here and do whatever you want. Um, you can assign it here. The one drawback with doing the shorter method that's a little prettier is you can't define a caching mechanism. You have to do this set thing. So the one other cool thing about this is there are a lot of framework variables that you can set in here. So for instance, I've mentioned this before in other videos, but there's one called autoload. 
and I can define it to be a directory. So I could say this one is, I like these better, uh, controllers. And everything in fat free ends in a slash. That's just a pattern to get used to. Like if you ever define a path, just make sure it ends in a slash. So now I'm in here, I'll have a new folder called controllers. And in here I'll create a new one called index controller. And this one is class index controller public function index and I always label my parameters here oh this puppy's array <clears throat> so now instead of this showing up here I actually can do index controller index. Now this will still work, although the sandwich bread, again, it's going to disappear because it's one of those globals and in classes you can't do a use function, you'd have to pass it in somehow. <clears throat> so this will work with the exception of this. So if I hop back over here and refresh, you notice the white disappeared, but everything else still works. So you're defining things out here that are still able to be passed into, oh, be, pay, be passed into here because your framework variable is here. This instance, it's the same instance throughout all the function calls that you have. So it's pretty cool, uh, really handy. It's kind of like a loose container. Um, it probably could be separated out a little bit better because it has a lot of configuration options like this auto load and all the configuration options, at least that I'm aware of, they're all um, capitalized. So one other thing that I can show in here really quick, do this, just so it's a little easier to see. And then we'll do print r framework. So you could see all the variables that are in here. So if I refresh this puppy, you could see that all these variables, it, it is a little confusing if you don't understand it, but they're, they're called a hive. And a hive, you could think of it like a beehive, and there's a lot of stuff going into this central location, all these little, you know, pods or whatever you want to call them. And you can see all of these things, language, alias, jar for cookies, port, query, client, all these like configuration options or um, readable options, they're available in here that you could pull from. So there's a page in the documentation that kind of highlights all of these different configuration options or things that are readable. So like if you wanted to set cache, this is how you set cache, you would do F3 or whatever your framework variable is, set cache, and it can be memcached, it could be folder, it could be true, it could be whatever. There's, you know, debug if you want to debug, which I highly recommend when you're having fun in your local development environment and set it to three. So you could just very quickly do come back here, debug equals three. So if a problem happened for whatever reason, like I name this a different method, and I come back here, say method not allowed, it gives me a little more of a stack trace output. Um, coming back here, there's just a lot of different options you can choose from. All really cool, all really helpful. You could access them wherever you need to in your controller because, again, everything is around the hive, which holds all the same data. Um, these are used in templates and other things, and you can even use these uh, to pass out, to pass through, um, globals on a, so if I did this guy, I could do get um, sandwich type, oh. so now if I come back over here, oh, I gotta fix the, that guy, if I come back over here and I do sandwich type equals white, Look, eat on a BLT on a white type of bread. And the cool thing here with get and post, request, session, cookie, those have those last two have some very specific things with them. But you can call get and all that the same way you could here with the fat free framework or just call it as a global. One cool thing that it does is that it will actually sync the global instance of, you know, get or whatever uh, to the framework. So you could 
pass it through each other and they both would reference the same variable. It's kind of cool. So anyway, that's kind of a highlight and an overview of variables. If you like these kind of videos, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much.